Hey, thanks for joining me today. This is Pastor Lafayette. We are in Luke chapter 24, getting near the end of the chapter. We're going to pick up in verse 44. I read this yesterday, but something I wanted to draw your attention to. Uh, Jesus has appeared. He's appeared to uh, disciples on the road to Emmaus. He's back. He's, he's, he's appeared to all the other disciples. And then uh, he says, he's talking to them in verse 44. He said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Jesus says in this portion, He said, I told you, um, these are the words I spoke to you, that all the things that are written in the Law of the Prophets and the Psalms might be fulfilled concerning me. And he's implying, you know, you didn't really, <coughs> you didn't really comprehend it at the time, you didn't really get it at the time, but uh, these are things that were written to me. Um, I want to draw your attention that the, one of those says the Psalms. Now, some have said that that probably means the writings, which would include the Psalms, uh, uh, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and so forth. But I want to encourage you to be a reader of the Psalms. The, 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 the book of Psalms is really it's so down to earth for us. It shows us the struggles that a man goes through uh, in trying to understand what's happening to his world around him, what's happening sometimes in his own life. He begins to question himself but he always turns it back around to praise. I encourage you to be a reader of, of the Psalms because it truly is a, uh, a book where it shows the inward struggle, the inward struggle, and uh, then, then the, the, the determination to just begin to praise. And when he begins to praise and begins to worship, uh, he, he begins to see, you, you see him go, uh, from a place of depression to a place of praise. And God meets his every need. Uh, it's a tremendous book. So Jesus said, I was written, these things were written, but you did not comprehend them. You didn't understand them. Verse 46, then he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And now it came to pass, while he blessed them, that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen couple of key points and I might touch part of one to one before we move uh, move into the next book which is the book of Acts um, it's believed the writer of Luke and the root writer of, of, of Acts are the, uh, is the same writer and so uh, there's a, a fluidity here so I want to go to the book of Acts next but I'm looking at verse 46 and it says verse 47 it said that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Meaning from this point, this, this, this epic point, this center, uh, the, from here it's going to go out, that, that men must repent. Uh, Paul said that he's commanded all men everywhere to repent. Repentance is part, is required for the remission of sins. It wasn't just something Jesus said. It wasn't some uh, word he slipped up and actually came out. Repentance uh, precedes the remission of sins and that it should be preached in his name to all nations. Um, my friend, it's really hard for God to forgive someone if they really don't mean that they're going to change or they're going to put any effort into changing. That doesn't mean that, that, that uh, <coughs> God is not forgiving. It doesn't mean that, that you won't make a mistake. 
but there needs to be repentance. Today, you hear a lot of preaching about just forgiveness. My friend, repentance is required before there's a remission of sin. And when that repentance takes place, then the remission of sin takes place, and then things are put in their right order. But until that process works itself through, things cannot be in right order. God just doesn't go around arbitrarily forgiving everyone's sins. Uh, there has to be repentance preceding those things. And you say, Pastor, what about the, uh, the time when Jesus forgave the guys who were crucifying him? Jesus was simply making a statement. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Father, they're following orders. These are simply Roman soldiers who are crucifying me, following the orders of their commanders. So, Father, in this sense, they don't know who I am. They don't know really what, I'm, what, what, what they're doing to me, how they're fulfilling this, uh, uh, the most horrific act and the most glorious act of all mankind. They don't know it. Forgive them because they don't know, because they don't understand. They didn't know. They didn't comprehend it. They didn't understand it. But my friend, if you know that you're doing something wrong, there has to be repentance in order for remission of sins. And that's what Jesus said should be preached throughout the globe. Think about that. Tomorrow we're going to pick up on another piece here, and, and then we'll get ready to lead into the book of Acts. Father, thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And Father, that, that the fact that you have called us, the Lord, that you have made a way for us where there was absolutely no way. But now, Father, things have changed. Our hearts have been changed. Lord, you brought us into the kingdom. You brought us into relationship. You brought us into the family. And we thank you and we honor you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.